Welcome to the Journey to Prosperity for All, uh, a program where we look and celebrate the two years of the PBPC government in office. And with me for the discussion, I have the Minister of Amerindian Affairs, the Honorable Pauline Sukai. Minister Sukai, thank you for joining me. Very good morning to you. Minister, firstly, uh, how would you describe your ministry and your sector upon assuming office in 2020? Um, that's a nice question. Um, when we assume office and we went to our office, it was not what we expected, not what I expected. Um, first of all, I believe that uh, the office and the ministry itself was deplete of, depleted of many, many documents that um, would have signaled to us the level of um, activity taking place in that ministry. Um, the office generally was cleared, <laughs> very clear, nothing, not even a computer. Oh. And I question whether the former minister ever used a computer or um, ha did any work. Um, the staff, obviously, um, some of them were elated that we were back. I suppose that um, they wanted to work with the government. And some, of course, were not very happy. And I will yeah. tell you, um, it's not what I expected. I believe that when employees are attached to any department, ministry, or any firm, that um, the leadership, the leadership is what will determine um, whether they stay or not. Yeah. Um, apparently, that was not the case. Some workers took the position of politics and decided that you know they were not going to stay. Um, generally, the activity in terms of the work being done for indigenous villages and communities, um, it was really a slowdown. There was like almost a pause. Um, my experience both assuming office in August of 2020 and the reality in the fields, because as a PVP Civic MP, um, during the five years, we did not slow down our work. In fact, we um, were very active in the fields. Every MP on our side was active in the fields. And so the reality that was in the field and the reality in assuming office was at a very slow pace. Mm. Even today, I have difficulty in um, nurturing and um, encouraging and a little push here and there as the policy head of the ministry and with overall responsibility for oversight, um, I still have to sometimes, from time to time, hold a um, session to encourage um, the, the staff that you know we have to push a bit harder, yeah. that there's always room for improvement. So it was not like you went into, a, you flung yourself into a very active uh, ministry. We had to take it and run with it. Mm -hmm. As you would say, um, we hit the ground running. And so there was a lot of nurturing and encouraging to get people up the pace. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing that today. Yeah. <laughs> Minister, in, in relation to that too, um, upon assuming office, there were a number of projects, initiatives that were launched immediately um, when you assumed. But let's talk a little bit about the, one of the most recent projects that the ministry has executed, and that is the National Tushau Council Conference. Um, how significant was it after that long pause for the NTC to be held? Well, um, it is significant for the Amerindian leaders to gather and to have an audience and an engagement with our government, His Excellency and the cabinet members. However, again, while it was significant, uh, there was no disconnect um, from the office mm -hmm. or the government to the people. And so we must always underscore that when we came into office, um, almost two years ago, it was an in, in immediate engagement with the population, whether it's on the coast or whether it was in the hinterland. But it is significant for Armenian leaders in that they are able to dialogue, have a conversation with 
the, the government of the day. And a serious conversation too, not one where they have to um, appeal to the government or the members of the cabinet and His Excellency to pay attention to them. They were given that hearing. And in doing so, they were able to articulate their plans for their villages and um, what benefits they wanted to accrue to their villagers, to the villagers. And so significantly, we are the only country where there's such a huge gathering of indigenous leaders uh, meeting with the head of state and his cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know of any other country that does that on an annual basis. And the genesis of the NTC was established um, from the late Dr. Jerry Jagan, and it is, and he, he, um, he lived to, he, he may not have lived to see it in total reality, but he was one of the first president who held one of the largest leaders uh, gathering in Parmakatoi. So in reality, um, the PPP Civic supported and approved the establishment of the NTC, and we encourage it, and we fund it, we co-host it, and for us, that is one way of taking government to the people yeah. directly. Definitely. And one of the major things that also happened during that NTC was the land titling program. And, and that has been happening since the assumption of office. Um, how do you, th what do you think this means, Minister, the land titling and the extensions uh, means for the Tushaus in those villages? Um, Indeed, that the Amerindian land titling project was one that was put on pause and we had to hit the ground running again. Um, we re-established um, an active, pro robust um, unit that in less than eight months produced um, extension and completed five demarcation. What land tenure security and land rights means for Amerindian it's, it's their priority. Mm -hmm. um, that's their, their asset, both, uh, both economically and even culturally, they're attached to the land. And our government um, has paid keen attention to that. And we have immediately, when our country could afford it, allocated $10.6 million to address not only the first time titling, but extensions that were requested by villages who believed that they needed more land to um, utilize for various um, purposes. And so our land tenure program is now um, in full gear. We are hopeful that the extension that we are anticipating will be shortly approved will bring us to the closure of those villages and um, communities that we're going to be title and extending, including demarcation. But land matters will not die when that uh, in the next year or two. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be new matters that we'll have to deal with. And my government, uh, the PPP Civic government, is committed to addressing and resolving, if it is a case of it being resolved, any, any matter being resolved regarding land, we are ready to deal with it. Minister, the government has rehired and trained just over 2,000 or more than 2,000 uh, CSOs to serve in their communities. Is this honoring the pledge of the PPP manifesto? Um, yes, indeed. Um, during the period of our being in opposition, every village we went to in the hinterland, there was a call for the return of the um, CSO program or what we call the Youth Entrepreneurial and Apprentice, apprentice Program, um, but popularly called the CSOs. Um, even the children wants to be a CSO today. <laughs> and so um, we have reestablished that too. We have reemployed um, to date 2,500 um, such young Amerindians, um, the vulnerable ones and those who um, were in search of you know, a job. Um, we have a good balance of um, female and females and males and those um, who have not been able to acquire full secondary education and those who have acquired some secondary education. So the, the balance is there where we, um, some will be able to assist others mm -hmm. as they grow together in the CSO program. The CSO program is, me, is, is firstly meant to give young people a second chance in, mm -hmm. in life, 
and also to have them engage in meaningful activities related to community development. Their touch or their supervision comes from the village council. They are selected by the villagers at the village council at a meeting. And um, so far, um, the positive uh, feedback we're getting is that the CSO are mostly, mostly um, fully um, em deployed. And um, villagers have been asking for addition, additional. So while we may have committed 2,000, mm -hmm. um, this year we were provided with approval to um, engage a four to 500. Oh. Mm -hmm. And that was very welcomed. Definitely. And uh, Minister, continuing the conversation, uh, in terms of food security, that has been a mantra of the PBPC administration and the Amerindian Affairs Ministry has been uh, donating and distributing equipment like tractors and things of that nature. How does this help um, these hinterland and river and communities in achieving that goal? Um, Amerindian communities and villages um, are still mostly subsistence. Um, for, they do subsistence farming. And um, from time to time, we have major setbacks in terms of the weather. Sometimes we have natural disaster, like the one recently mm -hmm. where um, many villages were covered with water. Their farms were waterlogged. They lost lots of crops. Um, however, within the bigger picture of agriculture being a priority for our, our country and the drive for Guyana to uh, participate fully in, in feeding, the, feeding the Caribbean region and mm -hmm. maybe the world in, in, the, in, in the future, um, the Amerindians are not left out of the equation. And so um, from the very onset, one of the things that we um, have invested in is equipment, machinery and equipment to assist farmers, Amerindian farmers, um, not only to increase cultivation, but transporting of produce. Um, be mostly Amerindian farms are pretty way out from the central location. And so transportation has been a major um, constraint to those um, farmers. So the tractor that we are providing is multi-purpose also. Mm -hmm. it's, it will aid agriculture, it will aid um, road building and maintenance, it will aid the logging sector, and of course the transport of goods and services from locations where villages obtain large um, supplies, food, uh, not food supplies, but general um, food supplies, building materials, and purchases from many locations. Because in some locations, um, a tractor is the best mode. Okay. In others, a lorry. And in others, of course, a minibus or a pickup. Mm -hmm. So there's an uneven kind of um, um, situation which will require um, different modes of transportation. So we're the tractor. Every village will receive a tractor. So far, we have distributed um, 112 um, tractors, which um, comes connected with a hydraulic dump trailer, um, a plow, and a chip, chipper. We have an additional 20, 25. Um, without implements, but we will obtain implements. But these will go to villages who've had tractors before and they're either um, not working um, to the fullest or um, is unserviceable. And so they would have had some implements prior to our this new distribution. And so we are going to uh, provide a 25 to those communities. Mm -hmm. We have another SEMTA one um, in that we have procured. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the situation with shipment has delayed a little bit, but we are hoping to get it before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And that means it will give a full coverage of all the main villages and most of the satellites receiving um, tractor and trailer to aid in agriculture and other um, major sectors in their village. Minister, we've seen transformational development in many of the Amerindian communities, almost all of the Amerindian communities. Talk to us a little bit about what that development looks like now for the last two years um, while you've been in office. Um, I, I believe you, because when we came into office, it was a litany of complaints and needs and requests that had to be met. And that forced us, as I said earlier, to hit the ground running. And you yourself mentioned the aggressive um, work in terms of project-related activities that were taking place in the villages. 
all the sectors of our government has propelled development outward from the coast into the hinterland. And it's one of our government's um, objective to minimize the gaps between both coastal and hinterland development. And yes, the Amerindians have seen school being refurbished, um, health center being upgraded. Mm -hmm. um, we have like multi-purpose buildings, tourism um, initiatives be being um, addressed. Um, roads, maintenance of roads where for over six years, almost six years, some roads have, have got, become so deplorable that in the interior, different vehicles refuse to ply those roads. Um, and so, yes, the transformation in terms of maintenance, constructing new um, facilities and um, road infrastructure, um, social infrastructure has mm -hmm. developed, and of course, we have seen that the introduction also of um, the ICT, which is going to really propel opportunities um, right into the village for our young people, farmers, um, women, and the villagers as a whole. And we are also hoping that um, every Amerindian village will become computer literate mm -hmm. with that program too. We, we have trained um, ICT trainers to support the program, and um, the ICT program also is majorly managed uh, or executed by Office of the President, and they too have a training budget that will enforce, and uh, not enforce, but complement mm -hmm. for the training of young Amerindians to manage that sector. It's a new sector for them, and it's exciting. They are anticipating um, great, great opportunities coming to them where they can study within the village and not have to come to the city um, to, to, to get tertiary level education. Um, professionals will be able to enhance and upgrade their professionalism through, through the internet um, virtually. Um, even the health system and the education system will see improvements. They're already seeing improvements in some of the schools having the learning ch access to the learning channel. But with the ICT hub, it's going to broaden the scope for all the sectors to uh, move forward. Yeah. And finally, Minister, as we wrap up our discussion, uh, two years uh, going forward now, how would you describe the administration's vision for the overall development of Guyana? Um, I believe that um, the PPP civic government is an excellent government for the people. It has a vision. Our vision is to ensure that as a people, we develop together, mm -hmm. um, we promote unity, we promote inclusiveness, and we, we promote sharing of Guyana's resources through the benefits that are accruing to all our people. The objective of modernizing our country is what I suppose every human being wants not only in Guyana, but elsewhere, everybody clamor for further development, further improvement, and further enhancement of their livelihood and opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so for us, the PPP civic government, we believe truly that Guyana, it is time that Guyana, you know, remain on a positive track. Um, and that is why we cannot allow ourselves now to be derailed. And for the future of our young people, I believe it's going to be exciting. It's a foundation which us, the leaders, who are now propelling and projecting this modern transformation that is, is taking place all across our country, it's visible, it, the evidences are there, our young people, contractors, workers, everybody's like fully um, immersed in, in what is going on, maybe not totally, mm -hmm. but um, we have, you can see it every day. If you look on the streets, you'll see canter full of young carpenters and masons and plumbers all being transported to construction sites. Um, you can see road building going on. You can see um, improvement in the health care, the supply of drugs, the educational system despite COVID, devastated face-to-face -face tutoring. We um, are back on track when you look at the results. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, and we remind ourselves, I, I go up the East Bank where I live, and across one of the bypass, you see all these young um, students who have excelled at, CP, um, 
at CAPE and, mm -hmm. and CXC or, and so on. So it, it is exciting for our people now. And I believe that young people should examine carefully what is going on in their country. They could examine the government's approach to building a one Guyana and to see the the expansion of opportunities and activities, economic activities taking place. Even the business people are, are now recovering from a, uh, um, a period when there was closure to the, the country, when we had curfew. Um, they too are, are now moving into a much more fast pace uh, business activity. So for us, the transformation is going to lay uh, a really solid foundation for a future generation. And I hope that I am around to, to see some of you know, what we are doing, enhance and secure the livelihood of our people in this country. And Guyana will be one of the top nations, in fact. I was very proud of the, His Excellency when he um, signed onto the health uh, project of, of building um, one of a state-of-the-art medical facility here in Guyana, mm -hmm. hoping that we will be a health destination to a health care destination, not only a tourist destination, but a health care destination. I think that alone tells how much interest our government pays in the population, because a healthy population is what will keep Guyana afloat and moving forward always. Minister Sukai, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you. This has been The Journey to Prosperity for All. I'm your host, Shaquan Gilsing. Bye for now.